morning once again. <clears throat> Happy 2018, right? Uh, I trust, uh, well, you know what, let's, let's do a little quick survey. Uh, Got to tell the truth. Who made a New Year's resolution? All right. And who has already broken their New Year's resolution? No, I, I, I won't make you uh, be that honest. <clears throat> uh, my New Year's resolution I already accomplished. It was uh, acquiring the illness that swept across my family. Uh, so that was great. Um, I will be taking intermittent sips of water and hopefully not coughing into the mic. Because of that, I feel much better, but still have those things lingering. I thought we would spend a little bit of uh, this morning thinking back about what 27, 2017 involved. <clears throat> There was some rough things, some wonderful things, some in-between things. Um, the first thing, uh, Moana was released on Netflix. That was a big thing in our, in our household. Uh, the good thing about that is that my kids were no longer singing all the songs from Frozen. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the bad thing uh, is that now they're singing all the songs from Moana. Um, the uh, August 21st was a big day. There was a total solar eclipse. Uh, this was a huge deal for, for a lot of people. I, I was outside uh, the entire time. I didn't have one of those uh, view, viewfinder contraption thingies where you can actually look at it. Uh, I was outside. I didn't notice anything happen. Maybe I'm just completely oblivious, but it was a, it was a big deal. Uh, the Internet told me so. Uh, so, and then we also had uh, something that was considered so dangerous that it was banned in schools across America. It was the fidget spinner. Uh, millions of these were sold in a matter of months, and uh, I didn't really uh, get the the. Uh... <laughs> what? Uh, uh, th there's, <laughs> I actually read an article uh, that there were so many companies, start big fresh startup companies that started right at the tail end of the fad and produced a ton of them, and now there's going to be these big landfills full of fidget spinners. <laughs> so if you're in the market, just wait a little bit, and then you can probably get them at, at a very reduced free rate. So, <clears throat> well, it, it, it wasn't all fun and games, obviously, in 2017. Uh, if you watched the news, they were very happy to let you know how bad things were. Uh, we had a political divide that, um, a political divide that really kind of defined our nation starting in the election, and that divide widened even more uh, th this, this whole past year. Uh, we had a hurricane season that saw uh, quite a number of major hurricanes, 200 dead, uh, billions upon billions of dollars in damages. We had a mass shooting in Las Vegas that took the lives of 58 people and injured, I think, over 500 more. And then just a few months ago, we had another shooting in a little town in Texas that took 26 of our brothers and sisters in Christ at a small little church. Um, not it wasn't just uh, our country that had a, a hard go of it. We had multiple terrorist attacks, some major, a couple of major ones in England. We had persecution of Christians all around the, the world. We had a major earthquake in Mexico. Uh, Sam Perez, one of our, our drummers, his family lived right near there. Everyone was okay, but uh, they ob obviously had a lot of rebuilding and, and, uh, and things like that to do. Close to home, we had people in our church that struggled financially, lost their jobs, lost loved ones, uh, got some very difficult medical diagnoses, uh, even in my own family. Uh, Levi, who had a, a successful brain surgery in December, and we thought, oh, okay, well, that's like our one, 
you know, kind of emergency thing. <clears throat> we, we'd, we'd heard from lots of parents uh, uh, stories about their, their kids that have had this, this one time kind of big operation or, or scare. And we thought, oh, okay, well, that's just our one. But in September, we, we had to have him get another uh, emergency brain surgery on his birthday. Uh, there is just stuff that went on this year that really causes us to ponder. Uh, and probably the question that comes up, not only for unbelievers, but for believers as well, is why does God let bad things happen to good people. This is by far the most asked question by those who do not know Jesus Christ. And it is the number one obstacle that they have in, in pursuing a relationship with Him. Um, this is not a question, I want to be upfront. this is not a question that we're going to answer this morning. We would need weeks and weeks <clears throat> to even scratch the surface. Uh, every pastor and, and theologian worth his salt has spent hundreds and thousands of hours thinking about this, this question. And there's, there's, there's things that we can learn from Scripture uh, that help us kind of wrap our, our, our minds around this question. But ultimately, got to be honest, a lot of times it comes out fairly unsatisfactorily. Uh, this is just a very difficult subject to deal with. So, instead of just answering this question, like I said, we're not going to do that, I wanted to look at an example from the Bible. So we are going to be going through the book of Job. Uh, we, if you want to turn in your Bibles, we will have all the, the verses up on the screen, but if you want to turn to your Bibles, probably the best place is going to be chapter 38. But fair warning, we're going to be going all over the place and skipping verses here and there just to try and cram as much in as we can. Uh, to give you a little backstory on Job, if you are unfamiliar with the book of Job, Job is a very wealthy man, very, very, very wealthy man. Uh, he has 10 children, which I suppose you would need to be wealthy to have that many children. Uh, he has 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a whole bunch of servants. And he is described in the beginning of the book as the greatest of all the men of the East. So he is a big shot, the biggest of the big shots uh, when we're talking about Job. <clears throat> in the first couple of verses, we are reminded who he is, and then we have this uh, dialogue that happens between Satan and God. Satan comes to God and says, hey, I would like to test your servant Job. Job is a follower of God. And God says, okay, go for it. I think he will stand, withstand your test. And so Satan's test involves Job's livestock and his servants being either captured or, or uh, killed by enemies. And ultimately, uh, his children are killed by this great wind that knocks over a, a house there. And so he loses literally everything in his life. He has nothing less left. And, and that's, that's Satan's whole purpose is he says, okay, well, if I take uh, all of your earthly possessions away, then you'll forsake God. I'm sure of it. Uh, then throughout the book, we have this series of monologues by, by Job and uh, talking with God, complaining to God. Um, we have monologues by his supposed friends, uh, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. Uh, and they, they tell Job, you know what, all of this has happened, all of this is punishment because of something you did that was unrighteous. This is, this is just punishment for sin. And Job says, no, that's, it, it can't be. Uh, so we have, we have monologues going back and forth. Uh, we have a big monologue by Job in chapters 27 through 31. And then at the end of the book, starting in chapter 38, we have a response from God. This is kind of God's uh, response to everything, uh, everything that people have said. And so that's where we're going to start in chapter 38. And I warn you, uh, this is... 
this is uh, interesting, the way that God speaks to Job. It's very, very sarcastic. It's, it's something we don't see very often from, from God. But this is 38, verse 4. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who set its measurements, since you know? Or who stretched the line on it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Let's skip to verse 16. Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Skipping to 34, he's, God has dealt with the, the earth and the, and the seas and now, now he goes to the heavens. Verse 34, can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that an abundance of water will cover you? Can you send forth lightning that they may go and say to you, here we are. And then 38 comes to a close. We start 39. Now he goes into nature's, uh, into, into his involvement with nature. Do you know the time the mountain goats give birth? Do you observe the calving of the deer? Verse 5, who sent out the wild donkey free? And who loosed the bonds of the swift donkey? To whom I gave the wilderness for a home and the salt land for his dwelling place. Skipping to 19, do you give the horse his might? Do you clothe his neck with a mane? Verse 26, is it by your understanding that the hawk soars, stretching his wings toward the south? Is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes his nest on high? God just sends these little, these little daggers at, at Job and says, really? Like you're questioning me? You, you're complaining about everything that's happened in your life, but you're questioning my plan? You're, you're, you're questioning my sovereignty? You're questioning that I'm in control? Really? Where were you when, when I created the earth? Because I'm pretty sure that I did. Where were you when all of that happened? When, where were you when, when, I, when, I, uh, when I tell the lightning where to strike? Where were you? Or, or do you know how to, to tell when, uh, uh, what's going to happen with the, with the animals? Or did you create the seas? All of these things. God is just saying, are you serious? This is your attitude toward me right now? And he ends it at the beginning of chapter 40. This is verse 2. Will the fault finder contend with the Almighty? Let him who reproved God answer it. Now, reprove isn't exactly a word we use on a regular basis. This does not mean to prove again. I looked that up. That's re-prove. That's a word too. But this is reprove, and, and, and the dictionary has two definitions, reprove. To criticize or correct, especially gently, or to disapprove of strongly, or to censure. Uh, this kind of tells us a little bit about ourselves when we complain to God. When we reprove God, I think we, we do it in a couple of different ways. We say, God, I'm not such a big fan of what's going on in my life right now, and uh, it'd be great if you could go ahead and make it happen the way that I need. Um, I think my way is probably a little bit better, so let's go ahead and do that. It's kind of like a nice little uh, patronizing pat on the head uh, that we give God. Or, on the other hand, we just yell at God. Say, are you kidding me? Are you crazy, God? This is, this is not right. This is not right. You fix it. You fix it now. You fix it the way that I want it to be fixed. How many times have we reproved our Creator? How many times have we told Him He's wrong, that He needs to do it our way, that our way is better than His way, our way is the best? I am a very visual person. And so as I was reading through chapters 38 and 39 of Job, um, I wanted to share with you a video that was done by, uh, it's a song uh, done by a band called Ghost Ship, and it's called Where Were You? 
And the video that you're going to see is put together by a group called Kessid Creative. I wanted to make sure all of those people were given credit. Um, but this, this puts into images and pictures a little more of what chapters 38 and 39 outline as God is speaking to Job. So hopefully this will give you an added layer of uh, understanding. I said, God, I do not understand this world. Everything is dying and broken. Why do I see nothing but suffering? God, I'm asking, could this be your plan? Sin has taken hold of this whole land. Will you not say anything else to me? He said, where were you the day that I measured? Sunk the babes and stretched the line. God will always hear us when we speak to Him. In our prayers of humility, but also in our complaints. But He is under no obligation to respond to us. He is Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. And yet, even in our complaints, 
He does respond to us. He chooses to respond to us. And it might not be the response that we want. It might, in fact, be the exact opposite of the response that we want to receive from him. But he responds. And do we, do we consider even just that response a blessing? That the creator of the earth, when we complain to him, responds to us. Think about that. That's amazing. What ways can we respond to our Heavenly Father then? Now, I am going to steal a little bit from Pastor Ron, so shh, don't tell him. Um, <clears throat> several years ago, he did a, I think it was a, a series of messages on ways that we can respond, and he outlined four ways that we can respond, and coincidentally enough, they are all found in the book of Job. The four ways that he outlined that we can respond are to punt, to pout, to pray, and to praise. We can punt. We can just say, nope, I'm done. I give up. I surrender. I'm going to kick the ball away. I punt. I'm done. Out of here. We can pout. We can sit off in a corner, say, woe is me. Say, look at me. Look at all the bad things that are happening to me. Big sad face. We can actually show some humility. We can recognize God for who He is and we can come before Him in prayer. Or we can do the very hardest thing of all in times of trouble, which is to praise Him, not just through times of trouble, but because of the trouble. That's an added layer of difficulty that I don't think many of us are willing to. Uh, willing to do. So where is this found in the book of Job? Punting is found in chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Then his wife, then Job's wife, then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Uh, weirdly enough, Job's wife was not nominated for wife of the year. Uh, Imagine that, your spouse just turning to you saying, ah, yeah, I know things are bad, so might as well just give up, die. Go, go die. Curse God and die. Uh, that's punting. We have uh, several instances of pouting from Job, where Job uh, kind of takes a woe is me attitude. Uh, the one I picked out <clears throat> is uh, chapter 30, verse 26. When I expected, and this is Job speaking, when I expected good, then evil came. When I waited for light, then darkness came. I am seething within and cannot relax. Days of affliction confront me. I go about mourning without comfort. I stand up in the assembly and cry out for help. And then verse 31, therefore my harp is turned to mourning and my flute to the sound of those who weep. Look at all the sadness. And I, do, I don't mean to mock Job because I would do the same in the, in the exact same situation. But, but that's what Job is doing here. He is not trusting in God. He is not seeing a bigger picture. He is not saying, God, you are sovereign and I believe that everything that's happened is for a purpose and that you'll take care of me. He's saying, oh, bad. <laughs> This is in response to God. Behold, I am insignificant. What can I reply to you? I lay my hand on my mouth. And then skipping to chapter 42, the very end of the book, verse 2. I know that you can do all things. He's finally trusting in who God is. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. And then finally, verse 6. 
Therefore, I retract and I repent in dust and ashes. He gets it. He figures it out. He understands finally who he was talking to. Instead of asking God, where were you in the bad times in 2017? Perhaps we should be asking, who am I? Are we really worthy to come to God with complaints? Or are we insignificant? So, we've come to the end of the book, but where's the praise? Where's the praise that I, I said all four were in the book of Job, right? Well, we have to actually go all the way back to the beginning. Chapter 1. This is immediately following everything that happened. All of his, remember, all of his livestock being wiped out, all of his children being killed. And here is Job chapter 1, verse 20. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground. And he didn't fall to the ground and die. He didn't fall to the ground and throw a big hissy fit. He didn't fall to the ground even on his knees and, and cry out to God for help. He fell to the ground and worshipped. The next verse, this is what Job says. He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, a little moment of forthrightness and honesty. <clears throat> when Katie and I in September found out that Levi was going to have another brain surgery. We did not we did not fall on the ground and worship God. We're, we're not that spiritually mature. We're not that strong in our faith. I, I'd say during that time we floated somewhere uh, between pouting and, and praying. That was about as good as we could do. So I'm not saying it's easy that we praise God, again, not through hard times, but even because of the hard times. That's extremely hard. It seems like it's almost impossible. And yet we see this example by Job <clears throat> that it is possible. So this past year when you were going through hard times, when you lost a loved one or when you lost your job or when you were having any manner of, of difficulty, what was your response? Did you throw in the towel and punt? Did you just kind of fall apart and pout? Did you recognize God for who He is and, and, and ask Him for help? in prayer, or did you do the hardest thing of all in praising God? I feel like God is just sitting there saying, if you only knew the things that I have in store, if you only knew that this time is just, it's a blip, it's an, it's a, an eye blink compared to eternity, if you only knew my plan, you would understand. So, what's in store for 2018 and how will you respond? I would love to stand up here and say, hey, 2018, banner year. It's going to be great. Uh, because we have, we have this example of Job, right? So at the end of the book of Job, everything is returned to Job twofold. Uh, he, gets, he gets twice as much as everything. Uh, he only actually gets ten children. Uh, so maybe that's also an additional blessing. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so I would love to say, hey, look, it's in Scripture. Job got twice as much stuff uh, when he decided to trust God. And so if you trust God through the hard times, 
you're going to get twice as much. You're going to get a better job than you lost. That, that relationship that, that wasn't mended, it's going, to be, it's going to be mended and it's going to be stronger than ever. I would love to say those things, and I cannot. There are some people who are in big churches that like to say those things. Uh, both myself and Pastor Ron, you will never hear that from. But what I can tell you is that God has things in mind. The things that we go through aren't just random. They're not just decided by fate. They aren't without purpose. He is, he is ordained and predestined things to happen to us, to have us grow as believers in Him, to have us grow in our faith, to have us become, to, to, to have us become better images of Him, of who He is, and therefore better ambassadors for His kingdom. So I don't know what's going to happen in 2018. It might get better. I hope that it does. I really do. It might be kind of the same. It might even get worse. But through all of this, how will you respond? How will you call out to God? How will you show your love and your faith in Him? I wanted to end with a song this morning. If I can have the ladies come up. <clears throat> ladies are going to help me because I have no idea whether we can actually get through singing here. This is a song written uh, some number of years ago by Matt Redman called Blessed Be Your Name. This is a song that we'd, we've done plenty of times before and it's kind of an upbeat, happy, catchy song, right? We're we're going to sing it a little bit differently. And I want you to think about the words that you're singing. I think a lot of times we sing and we don't really pay attention to the words. But I want you to listen to the words as you sing them. And maybe this can be our prayer. Uh, Matt, Matt Redmond took this, the, uh, the course and the bridge straight from, from the, those last verses that I read out of Job. Maybe this can be our prayer when... Hard times happen. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Found in the desert place, or walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. The sun shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, the road marked with suffering, whose pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, 
Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Father, it's difficult. We get wrapped up in our stuff. And when something interferes with that, we think that something terrible has gone awry. And we blame you for it. Lord, even in the hard times, the hard times that we know at some level are going to come in 2018. Even in those difficult times, Lord, we choose not to give up. We choose not to sulk. Lord, we choose to praise you because you are almighty. Because you know the hairs on our head, even as Bryant was saying last week, you you know the, the number of hairs on our head. You care so deeply about us that you sent your son just as we have celebrated this morning in communion. Nothing is outside of your reach. You are sovereign Lord. We trust you and we praise you. We love you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Have a great time of connecting.